I really like this vest. I'm not gonna lie. It's been in a lot of videos. It was kind of like I had that period when it was like the hat. I like the hat. I still like the hat. I still have the hat because of long hair. I prefer not having the hat on it. But I like this vest. That's it. I just really like this vest. I'm probably gonna get a whole bunch more vests. I like vests. I wish I could be sponsored by vests. Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, you might hear a little bit of rumbling. And I'm not gonna do any, like, cleanup or anything like that. Um, I've been trying to do some cleanup on some of my videos when there's been, like, a lot of, like, AC noise just on the other side of this wall. But I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm in Texas. It's summer. <laughs> or it's getting closer to summer. I think it was still spring. I think it's still spring. I don't remember. Um... Uh, so it's gonna start getting hot, and so I gotta have the AC on, and that's where all the AC units are. So, it's gonna be a little bit rumbling. But this is not normally what clients hear. I don't know why I told you that. Anyway, uh, it's been a while since I actually recorded a video, um, uh, with this setup, because I've been very busy, as has been, uh, made clear in a lot of other videos, live streams, and stuff like that. Uh, we are, there is a timestamp, if you want to just watch the stuff talking about the topic for today, which is actually going to be talking about Bill Deweys, a topic that I was going to talk about a while ago uh, after a live stream just because we got some some very interesting uh, comments and suggestions and topics come up on the subject of Bill Deweys. So uh, if you remember those live streams, do what you do and do what you were going to do down in the comment section. And for those who are not a part of those, you guys are going to be very confused and I'm going to be loving it. Anyway, uh, but before we get into that, there was a couple things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, number one, uh, there is um, a, a huge uh, project that I've been working on that I'm now hosting some auditions for some side and extra characters and some uh, support characters and there's like 10 roles and it is very much open uh to pretty much anyone uh i i noticed that when i write i'd never write a character's race uh and there are some characters who i have character sheets for or some kind of like depictions of the characters and there are some actors that i had in mind when i was just kind of visualizing it but Technically, any performance will do, considering this is going to be a pitch project, meaning I have a whole bunch of scripts finished for this series, and I have about six or seven in a row as of right now. Some of them need to be reworked a little bit more, but I wanted to start kind of getting together the pilot. The first episode is the most polished, so I wanted to go ahead and try to do a 20 to 30 minute pilot and for that there's a lot of roles that are available as of right now it's not paying too much also just because it's all coming out of pocket and there's not that many lines for these characters but every single one of these characters to varying degrees are reoccurring throughout the series link to that will also be in the description so i've made a post on twitter i've made a post on facebook i made a post on castingcall.club i made a youtube comment and uh, I've emailed people, and then I also made a, and then so now I'm doing this video. So that's like six. That's six different ways that I'm trying to let you guys know. Considering there's been a lot of people who've wondered uh, if anytime I do a project that there are auditions or there are roles to be filled to let you guys know. And there you go. I've done that, and as full as possible, as, as, as many different ways as I can. And I've gotten a lot of auditions come in so far, and you have until the end of April, if April of um, 2022. So if you are seeing this video after April of 2022, chances are there, I'm not hosting the auditions for those characters or for that episode anymore. There's going to be more characters that come down the line. If... I get the ball rolling if I get more done, but I've tried to <clears throat> pitch and I've tried to produce animation before uh, to varying degrees. So I'm kind of playing this one, you know, loose and by, by ear. So I don't know where it's going to go, but I did want to do a pitch. And so trying to get people together to do an animatic and uh, yeah. So there you go. 
Now on to the topic at hand. <clears throat> and uh, it was Bill Luis. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who um, apparently... I actually... Let me rephrase that. I didn't know how many people didn't like Bill Luis. And I didn't know the kinds of things that people were saying about Bill Luis. Surprisingly, a lot of the same comments and a lot of the same kind of depictions of Bill Deweese, uh, almost exactly the same as Earl Hall. And I did a video talking about my personal experience, having worked with, having talked to, and having communicated with and known Earl Hall for many years. Well, I've known Bill Deweese for a long time as well. Not as well. Uh, we haven't had as many back and forths, as many one-on-ones, but I've had coaching with him. I have had emails back and forth. You know, uh, I've, I've communicated with him on multiple levels. I've also been watching his YouTube videos for many years since the first one went up. It was actually where I learned a lot of the building your own studio kind of stuff. And Bill DeWeese was one of the first people to really do anything like that. No one really, no one else really had anything as far as like the independent voice actor doing voiceover from home on YouTube. No one else was really doing that. I saw Bill DeWeese and there was like a couple others, uh, but Bill DeWeese really spoke out to me. He really felt um, approachable. He felt more like someone that I could ask questions and he would answer. Not everyone was like that and not everyone is like that. There's a lot of people that you could try asking questions. You could try getting information and they will shut you down. They will be rude. They will block you. I've been blocked by people just asking them basic questions. Um, a lot of people on Twitter, uh, you know, uh, industry professionals that you know, especially during the periods when I've been trying to learn more about anime. Even though I know I could do the job, um, as far as like getting the work, there's a lot of um, unknowns. And so I've been trying to find people to either coach me or to just ask questions. And I've gotten blocked by a lot of people just by asking questions. Bill Deweese does not block people for asking questions that I know. Now, that's not to say that if you were to hound him nonstop, that he's not going to take some sort of action to stop your endless, ceaseless, you know, comments. I've had to do stuff like that before, and it really, really sucks when people just endlessly message me, um, you know, uh, about stuff that I literally have in videos or that I've literally said before, and I will send them the information and they will ignore it and they will just keep asking basically the same question over and over and over again. Um, so if someone has done that and he's blocked them, I can imagine that he's done that. He is a very busy man. Um, so, and the reason I said that is because there are some people who, from what I've read, have negative experiences with, with Bill Deweese. Um, not that many of them, however, really seem to go into detail. It, it didn't seem, at least to me, and by the way, before I go any further, if you have a, uh, uh, had ever taken coaching with Bill Deweese, or you've done one of his seminars, or you've talked or met with Bill Deweese in person, please leave down in the comment section below what your experience was like. Um, yeah, uh, but I've been reading a lot of negative comments. A lot of it seems to be on stuff like Reddit and Twitter, which are not normally my sources of information, not reliable in the least, uh, but they're really vague and they always seem to go in the same direction as Earl Hall. It seemed to go in the same uh, snake oil salesman, hustler, um, liar, uh, you know, talks a big game, but doesn't, you know, can't really perform that kind of thing. Um, which is not the experience that I've had with Bill Deweese. Um, I, again, I've gotten some coaching with Bill Deweese. I've talked to Bill Deweese and though I personally didn't gain a lot of information um, at the point that I had gotten some coaching with him. Um, if I had come to him much earlier in my career, there would have been a lot more that he could have bestowed upon me 
wisdom that, you know, I didn't know. But by the time that I did eventually get coaching with Bill Deweese, there was a lot of stuff I already knew. And, you know, especially when it came to things like Voices.com, Voice123, Bidalgo, Fiverr, you know, emailing, um, just different ways of getting getting your information out there. I already knew a lot of that. And Bill Deweese is more in the e-learning, the... Uh, explainer videos, the commercial, commercial narration, just narration in general, radio. Um, me, I'm in the animation, video game, cartoon, character work. That is my that is my absolute strength. And his is more on the technical, more business side. And so, even though there is stuff that I absolutely could learn from Bill Luis, there actually is stuff that I know that I could learn because anytime someone you know, we all live different lives. We've all experienced different things. And most of what we know, most of what we learn is based on experience. So if someone has experienced something that you haven't, they already know something that you don't, regardless of how relevant it may be or how practical it may be, they know something you don't. Um, it also could what they know could also confirm something that you thought you knew, but didn't truly know, something that you suspected but just needed a second opinion on. That could also happen as well. And that's what happened a lot with me and Bill Deweese. And there was actually some stuff that he did um, inform me. There was actually a trick for getting better at doing commercial narration that really, really helped me. And it did actually help me out a lot. Now, um, here's something that both Bill Deweese and Earl Hall have in common that I think is kind of a cornerstone linchpin to the idea that they're kind of um, snake oil salesmen and hustlers kind of thing, that recurring thing. Number one, they're both kind of outside of the usual industry loop. They're both online. They're both freelance. They're both, they both work more non-union than union. They both prefer the kind of the hustle, that kind of emailing, that kind of, you know, grinding to get the work, as opposed to a lot of industry professionals who only go through agents, only go through managers, and only go to major studios. And everything is Screen Actors Guild, sag after a union, whatever. Um, but Bill DeWeese and Earl Hall basically have the exact same. Now, I don't want to just lump these two together. I, I'm not making... I don't want you to think that these are two exactly the same people. They're not. Um, and I don't want you to think that that everything that is said about one is the same as everything that's said about the other. Again, it's not. I'm just saying, I'm just using Earl Hall as kind of a, a reference point because I did a, a video on Earl Hall before. Um, also, he's another person that's constantly in the same kind of uh, lights of scrutiny as Bill DeWeese. Um, but they're both considered snake oil salesmen and, and hustlers in the fact that they a lot of a lot of what they do online is kind of this marketing guru kind of thing. They both have this kind of help, you know, coaching people into getting more work into getting themselves out there into getting, you know, uh, marketing themselves and and working their way around the the audition lineups to get work. They both basically have the exact same thing. And they, they have very similar tactics and strategies as well. Sorry. Voice is getting a little dry. Mm. Uh, who else drinks from a milk jug? That's what I'd like to know. Anyway. <clears throat> um, so they both have a lot of that. They both sell um, books. They both sell seminars. They both sell worksheets. They both sell coaching. Basically on the same topic. Now... What seems to be happening a lot, and again, this is just my observation from having known both of them, from re reading the comments, from knowing some people who actually don't like them, um, is it seems like a lot of the time it comes from someone hearing one of these two, so, uh, someone who's a marketing guru, especially in the, vo uh, the voiceover industry, build themselves up in this grandiose, larger-than-life way. And then 
you know, uh, brags a little bit, being braggadocious on how much they make, the clients they have, and all this kind of stuff, and then sells a book, a worksheet, uh, a, a class, a coaching session, what have you. That's supposed to get you to where they are. And then people buy those things. They, they, they put money down, either for the coaching, for the class, the book, what have you. And then it doesn't work for them. And it's, it's normally around that point that people think that, that there's like some shady hustling kind of thing going on. And the idea, the perspective that seems to arise is that I didn't make any money or, or I'm not making any money doing voiceover. I'm not, you know, getting more popular. I'm not getting the work after taking this class, buying the course, buying the book, what have you. You know, and they're talking about how much money they're making. Obviously, they're just making money off me buying to learn how to make money. That seems to be what it is. Um, now, I'm not saying that this is the case in every circumstance. This is not everyone's experience, but it seems to be the general experience. Whether that's valid or not, I can't say, at least not for certain. But that seems to be a reoccurring theme. Someone builds themselves up, um, promotes themselves as someone who can help you get more money, someone who can help you get more work. Um, this is also why I never do that. I never actually promise anything. I never actually, you know, I hate bragging. I hate boasting. I hate talking about how much money I make. Mostly just because of that. If someone wants to learn from me, I hope it's because they think that I'm skilled, not because I'm talking about how much money I'm going to make or how much money I am making. Um, because I can't promise anybody anything. Not every tactic, is, especially when it comes to marketing and building yourself up and building a career is going to work for everybody. There's no formula. There's no tried and true method. No matter how many times you go to Bill Luis, no matter how many times you go to Earl Hall, even if you do really, truly respect them, love them, and you know even worship them, I don't, but even if you did, that there's no guarantee that everything they do is going to work for you. That's just the reality of things. There's no coach. There's no studio. There's no class. There's no workshop. There's no book. There's no seminar, webinar. There's none of that that you can go and guaranteeably make money. None of it. There's not a single one of these things you can go and do, take, listen to, what have you, and come out at the end basically already making bank. Not a single one. I've listened to a lot of audiobooks. I've done a lot of coaching. I've taken a lot of coaching, rather. I've taken a lot of seminars, webinars, watched a lot of videos. Not everything works for me. In fact, there's a lot of times that I have clients, I make money, and I get work, and I have no idea what I did. And I couldn't tell you. Quite regularly, it comes down to, for me, just having my stuff out there, just having my demos, my samples, and, you know, links to me and, you know, methods of communication to me readily available to anyone and everyone who would be interested. That doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't work for every part of the industry. Not everyone can just post their demos out there and get work. Not everyone can, you know, just make themselves available and then just all of a sudden look at their emails the next day and there be work. Not everyone can get an agent. Not everyone, even if they have an agent, can get work. Not everyone who doesn't have an agent can get work and not everyone who doesn't have an agent isn't getting work. It's insane. There's no tried or true method. There's no guaranteed way of being successful in the industry. This is why you have to listen to a lot of opinions. You have to listen to a lot of people. That's why you have to take classes and coaching from more than just one person. That's why you have to watch a lot of videos. That's why you have to ask a lot of questions. That's why you got to, you know, brainstorm and, and try your own things in your own, your own booth. That's why you got to try different microphones. Don't break the bank. 
don't put yourself homeless because you spent it all on the most expensive mics. But we never know. Like, I can talk to a, a hundred people, and I'll never know for sure that I can make them successful, that I can make them money. There's been some people that have come to me for demos that uh, I'm not gonna, I'm obviously not going to name names. I'll never name names. Um, but they came to me. I didn't think that they had what it took as far as like motivation or as far as they didn't really have the acting range, but I helped them make a demo. They did a good job with the demo. Um, I, I would say I've definitely gotten better performances out of other people. Um, but then they turned it around and they used that demo and they, you know, got contracts and started working with companies that I've never been able to work with. I'm glad I was able to help them. I have no idea what I did. <laughs> I have no idea if it was me. I have no idea if it was them. I have no idea. It could just be that the industry, that particular studio was looking for someone that sounded exactly like them. I don't know. And it's because of this not knowing people wanting guarantees, people wanting assurance, people wanting, you know, a, a done deal. And, and then taking a workshop, taking a class, talking to someone, watching a video, and then not actually getting what they want, not actually getting what they were expecting, and not ending up where they thought they would be ends up being very frustrating. And anytime you have someone who kind of goes against the kind of goes against the flow a little bit, like Bill Luis, he's not technically going against the flow. He's, you know, everything he says is basically still on par. It's just slightly parallel um, with the industry. Just a few areas where he's got issues with the industry. And I do too. Everybody does. Even people in the industry have problems with the industry. Um, but I think that's what it is. Because my personal experience with Bill DeWeiss is that he's a genuine guy. He's a nice guy. He knows what he's talking about. He is very friendly. He's very approachable. He's more than willing to share information. <laughs> yes, he does want to make some money. And I don't blame him. Um, you know, I personally, I put out videos. This is how I make money sharing information. It's free. It's hours of content. You have to scroll through and you got to be patient. Um, but I feel like the patience is worth it. Um, but that's how I make money sharing. Some people can, you know, can condense it into bite-sized chunks, into worksheets, into chapters. And that extra amount of work to condense it into a more streamlined form does actually take more out of them and is actually worth more money. But again, no matter who you go to, no matter what you, what, what you pay, no matter what you take, not everyone's going to work for everybody. And I think that's what the case has been for Bill DeWeese, very much like Earl Hall. People have been taking workshops with them or buying their books and it's just not working with them and them thinking that they are, you know, hustlers, snake oil salesmen, just taking their money. And that really comes down to a very crucial thing. Now, now there are other people who don't like Bill Deweys for different reasons. The industry, industry, by the way, um, doesn't like Bill Deweys because he was kind of going against a flow, getting work around them without going through the usual channels. And that's another, that's, I mean, that's a whole nother topic. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole, I mean, that is a huge can of worms. That is a huge, that's a huge topic that I don't know if we have enough time for. Maybe we'll do a number two, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's my experience with him. I think he's a genuine guy. I, I think just like Earl Hall, he, his strength is in marketing. Um, and I think in small ways, yes, part of his business is promoting his business. But that's what every voice actor should be doing. Every voice actor should be promoting their business. Every voice actor should be bombastic a little bit. Not to the point of arrogance, not to the point of being an asshole, but we are supposed to pitch ourselves 
as if we are the shit. We are supposed to be doing that. We do... Uh, if you're anyone anyone like me, you do prefer being, you know, you know, uh, honest and humble and, you know, quiet and you don't like causing waves or you don't like, you know, throwing yourself out there like you're a big shot. But in a small way, we do kind of have to do that. And that is part of their business. And they're good at it. So that's it. That's all I got. So, um, yeah, those who've been... Uh, uh, who stayed, uh, and those who uh, want to leave some uh, Bill Deweese comments and memes, leave those down below. And uh, let's actually see if we can get some of that stuff going uh, for, uh, um, you know, like some, some visuals or so, something like that. I'm trying to get some images going. I'll probably, on the, uh, the, the community section, I'll probably take my favorites and may maybe add some, some Bill Deweese stuff to them. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, it's gonna be it. So, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Totally fine. Subscribe if you do. Bell for notifications. And leave down in the comment section below if you'd like to see me cover any other topics. It's totally fine. And, uh, yeah. Guess I'll catch you guys later. Peace.